Okay, so in the last video I talked a little bit about where the idea of the completing the square comes from. Here we're going to build on that and try a bunch of examples. So less explaining so much of, of why this is working, but, but more of how. And again, just quickly, this goes back to the idea that if I take something like x plus a and I square it, I can see that the perfect square form of it, or if I completed the square, I would get x plus a times x plus a, and then if I work through this, I get x squared, right, plus ax, plus ax, plus a squared, and all I'm doing here is multiplying these terms to create this expression, right? And here if I simplify it, I can see the perfect square. It's x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So in all of these problems, our goal is to rewrite expression in this form because if it is in this form then it is a perfect square right we've completed the square and we get a perfect square and we can work backwards to easily factor at it out to work all the way back to something like x plus a squared that's the general goal in all of these and you you might you know you might see it in a different form you might see it as well x squared not plus 2ax but plus bx and then to complete the square you think oh we'll take b divided by 2 and square that but that is the same thing as this these are equivalents because b is just coming again from well b is the same thing as 2a right and b is 2a and that just means that well a equals um, b divided by 2 and all I'm doing there is solving for a in this expression, right? Here, here, 2 times a is b, so b divided by 2 is a. That's inverse operations. And if that's true, well, then what is a squared? Well, a squared equals b over 2 squared, right? It's just this term right here, squared. So I guess this formula, I'm not going to use it in this video. I'm going to use this approach up here. This formula is really good, I think, if you're very familiar with completing the square and are, are quick to, rem to remember how to use this. I, f I like this one up here because it's more intuitive, right? You could start with this, see how the perfect square looks, and then and then go from there. But but without further ado, I just wanted to, to say, yes, this is what I'm going to use here without any more waiting. Let's solve some of these. So let's say you're given something, we'll start with something easy, um, x squared plus um, um, Let's say 18x. Well, what do you do? Well, again, a perfect square would have x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So in this case, 18 equals 2a. And I want to complete the square, all right? I want to finish this out, so I need to first of all solve for a. And a will equal 18 divided by 2, or 9. And then I want to square a, right, to finish this process and rewrite it. And that equals 81. So if I add 81 here, I've rewritten this as a perfect square. And I can refactor this now out to x plus 9, right, times x plus 9. And that's just x plus 9 squared. And if I test this out, I'll see that it does, in fact, equal this term here. And I knew that it would be x plus 9 because, remember, our first form was to say that well, to get this perfect square up here, you have to start with x plus a, right, and square that. So all I have to do to find that a term is, is remember that we know a squared is 81, so this term is 9 because 9 is the square root of 81. So that's how I can rewrite this as a, a perfect square. Let's try another one. What about something uh, negative, x squared? minus 44x. So now we're subtracting 44x and and instead of thinking of x plus a squared, right, and how that equals x squared plus 2ax plus a squared, I'm gonna just go back and remember that x minus a squared also forms a perfect square, but it looks like this. x squared minus 2ax plus a squared. And you can work that out and see, or go back to the last video, and you'll, you'll understand where that comes from. But this is going to help me here, because I have this negative 44x. 
Okay, so what do I do? Well, now negative 44 equals 2a, right? That's the second term. It's a negative 2a, so that's that's what we have here. We have negative 44. So then a equals negative 44 divided by 2, which is negative 22. Okay, and then a squared just equals negative 22 squared. And what's that? Well, we can work it out. Same thing as 22 times 22, right? 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is another 4. Placeholder. 20 times 2 is 40. 40 20 times 20 is 400. Add up, we get 484. Now, as a perfect square, we can rewrite this as x squared minus 44x, right, plus 484. And then we can factor this to x plus 22. Oh, excuse me, x minus 22 squared, if you want to look at it that way. Now, this is not solving for anything. All I'm doing in this example, this video, is rewriting it as a, as a, as a, as a, <laughs> rewriting this by completing the square. That's all I'm doing here. And let's try one more example. Um, what if we had something like x squared minus, I don't know, um, 3 fifths x, and we want to complete the square? Well, now, right, minus 3 fifths equals 2a. And we want to divide both sides by 2 to find a. And we have negative 3 fifths, oops, 3 fifths divided by 2. And that's just, if you think of fifths, you're cutting this in half now. Uh, but an algorithm here is to multiply by a half, right? It's the same thing. So we get negative 3 fifths times a half is the same thing as dividing by 2. And that gives me negative 3 over 10. And that equals a. So what's a squared? Well, a squared equals negative 3 over 10 times negative 3 over 10. And we just multiply fractions right across. So negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, and 10 times 10 is 100. So that's a squared. So to complete this square, we would add 9 over 100. And if we had to factor this out, that would equal x minus the square root of, right, of 9 over 100, which is what? Well, that's just 3 over 10. So x minus 3 tenths squared. So even with fractions, we can quickly complete the square by figuring out what a is and then squaring that and rewriting our, f our formula as a, uh, a perfect square. All right, hope this helped. In the next video, we'll, I think we'll look at the quadratic formula and how this applies to solving for the roots. Thanks.